Coming to you from the all-new Live House in Hollywood, California. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Pensado's Place. If you purchase audio, and how do you not purchase audio, you need to know some tips and tricks on how to make that experience even work better for you. We've got a couple of experts, and they're going to show you how. But first... It's the last call for the NAM Super Panel. Yeah, you've heard us talking about this. Dave and I'll have Phineas, Lewis Bell, and Alex Tume. That's Friday, January 17th at 5 p.m. in the Hilton Hotel Pacific Ballroom up on the second floor. These hit makers are behind Billie Eilish, Post Malone, 21 Savage, Future, and a whole bunch more, and they'll share all their secrets with you. Afterwards, you can meet them, take a flick, ask questions, hang out, plus win prizes from folks like Warm Audio, AutoTune, and TuneGo. Now, important note, you must have your badge to enter, so make sure you have your badge, get there early, get a seat, it's going to be very cool. We've been sharing with you the last couple of weeks the incredible platform known as Splice. Now remember, that platform allows you to create, connect, and collaborate with access to great sounds and software in an affordable way. Splice has royalty-free samples, loops, sound effects, and presets. You can choose a monthly plan as low as $7.99 a month. And there's a mobile app, so you can browse, preview, and download while you're on the go. Then when you're back at your rig, those sounds are there waiting for you, and you can go on and create. So plenty of our Pensado guests use Splice. Uh, Dave uses it himself, Been correct? Using it for quite a while, yeah. So folks like Oak Felder, Boy Wonder, all kinds of guys use it on things like Demi Lovato, Drake, Big Fredia. Uh, it's pretty incredible. They also have a rent-to-own program, so you can pay off the software's retail price over time in small monthly installments almost with no interest whatsoever, then you own the license forever. That includes plugins like Serum, Arturia V Collection, and Isotopes Ozone, plus the popular DAW Studio One by Personas. Splice is good stuff. Now here's your chance and your last chance to get one month free access to Splice Sounds 100. That's 100 credits for the month. Hit this link you see right below me, enter Pensado 100, and you are good. And we'd suggest hurry, hurry, hurry. So the fortunate thing about our platform mm -hmm. is, you know, we become aware of product and software all the time, mm -hmm. but there's yeah. certain things that stand out and you go, oh, this is really good. Yeah. We recently met the guys from Cali Audio and they came by and did yeah. a demo in your studio. What, what was your take? Man, I had I, I split it up in two parts. Number one, I was blown away by the sound of these speakers and um, I, I really liked them a lot. The second thing that blew me away was their 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 attempted to try and make them affordable, which they're doing a good job at. Mm -hmm. And the, the quality of the people involved, you could tell that they really, really, really knew what they were doing. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a good company and a great product. I thought the um, reaction to the, the studio team was interesting. These are not, these are guys that, yeah. you know, your assistants, yeah. some of them are pros, yeah. some of them aren't, but they had such reaction yeah. to it that I think it's a perfect kind of monitor speaker yeah. for our audience and yeah. so forth. We're going to have them on in a couple of weeks yeah. and, oh, go ahead. For me personally, there's always been a gap between the cost of an NS10 and everything else. And the right. NS10 was, was just a, a workhorse from the eighties and early seventies and and maybe, I don't know about early 70s, but the 80s for sure, and 90s. And and this felt a little bit like that moment when, when you first get those NS10s dialed in. I'm not mm -hmm. saying they're NS10s, but but that they, 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 I'll use mine like that mm. as, a, as a replacement for an NS10. Oh, good stuff. Um, another platform that I had the luxury of spending time with the president and chairman of is an artist platform, not really just artist platform, mm -hmm. called Tungo. Yeah. Um, so if you're, a, if you're an engineer, songwriter, artist, producer, this is a one-stop platform, way more than an app, that does so many different things. Their vault system, you can store files, metadata, mm -hmm. stems, production contracts, Almost anything you use in the creative process, it will automatically update things when you use them. You can collaborate across platforms. You can keep your metadata. It's really amazing. There you have, they have technology and they've spent a fortune on technology, um, that can collect royalties for you, that can distribute your music, that it really, really goes in depth. They even have virtual A&R, virtual 
they they shop songs to places like ESPN and so on and so forth and can handle licensing for you. Um, Perfect for today's world. These guys have really thought it through. We're going to have them on shortly. So just keep this in mind. Um, Cali Audio, which will be on shortly, and also Tungo. So um, for all this information, go to our newsletter, sign up for it, like, subscribe, and add us on social media and hit us and we'll hit you back. Now we've got one of our Sweetwater Sound Advice pieces featuring Mitch Gallagher. What's he talking about today? Well, he's he's talking about uh, using the stereo bus and and specifically there's times when you put um, plugins and and gear on the stereo bus and you think you're killing the world, but you're just making it louder. So this is some information on how to judge what, what and how to use your stereo bus and the processing on it. Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Welcome to Sound Advice. Today I've got a tip for you that will make it very easy to compare processed to unprocessed signals when you're working with a stereo bus, like your main two bus output on your DAW. One of the problems you can have when you're processing the stereo output bus is that adding things like compression and limiting and even EQ will also change the level. So when you bypass those plugins, or if they're hardware processors, if you bypass them, the level drops. And anytime you're comparing two signals where the level is different, typically the loud one will sound better to you. And even if it doesn't sound better to you, you're not going to hear the difference accurately. So we need to have that dry signal and the process signal come out at the exact same level. Normally the way we'd set up our stereo bus is, we have our dry track coming in, and it's routed to the master output, and is going through a compressor, an EQ, and say a limiter. Maybe those three plugins are what you're using. In most cases, each of those plugins is going to tend to increase the level, so when we play back and we bypass the plugins, the level drops. And again, this is messing with the accuracy of what you're hearing. You're not getting a true A-B comparison between the processed and the unprocessed signal. So what I like to do is move my stereo bus processing onto an aux track. Let me set that up for you. First of all, I'm going to remove all these plugins. Now I'll open up another aux. So the way my routing is set up, we're coming in, this is our uh, input mix. It's being sent through this bus, through the compressor, the EQ, and the limiter. And then from there, it's going to the master. Now I've set up a duplicate bus here that has no processing on it, and you can see that I've adjusted the levels to compensate for what's happening with our processing that's on the stereo bus. Now when I A-B compare, the signals will be lined up more accurately. So here's our dry signal. And now we can compare that to our process signal. This makes it much easier to get an accurate comparison and to really be able to hear what effect that bus processing is having. Now this is a very useful trick to use on your master bus because you can easily A-B compare, but I also use this on individual tracks in a mix if I'm adding particular processing. I might duplicate them, leave one dry, set its level at a particular point, add the processing to the other, and then I can A-B compare and hear what's really happening with that processing. I hope you find this tip useful when you're processing your own mixes. Thanks for joining me for Sweetwater Sound Advice. I'm Mitch Gallagher. We thought it was important to take a look at the shopping experience. You can't be in audio without getting gear or software, whatever the case may be. So we brought in a couple of experts, and by the magic of television, one of them you just saw. Bringing to you Mike Peacott. He is the senior sales engineer at Sweetwater and the one, the only Mitch Gallagher. How are you? Doing great. Man, you went from a piece to being here. Imagine. (laughs) Right on, man. I'm double duty here. Yeah, unbelievable. (laughs) So we try to find places that people don't, expose as much but are really germane to the to the process and you can't make audio without having tools right and you have to have a place to go get the tools um during our journey we've had a chance to meet most of the retailers and be involved in one way or the other and and there truly is a sweet water difference I, I liken it to I like Apple care when you call with your iPhone and something's wrong, they take care of it on the phone. It's a good experience. You feel good. You want to, it's the only thing I'll fill out a poll and give back. And I find that the people that either we turn on to Sweetwater, that we deal with Sweetwater, it's the same way. Is there a specific sort of company mandate to, to do, do right by the consumer? Uh, I mean, we've always done business by just doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. So I think that's, it's summed up in one line to mm-hmm. always do the right thing. And a lot of the customers and, 
clients that I have and I'm talking to as well as my coworkers. Mm-hmm. Um, you form relationships with these. It's a one-on-one relationship. So uh, you're talking to guys a lot. They, they're, you know, I consider most of my clients like, like, relative, friends, like really, really close friends mm-hmm. where I've met um, a really big chunk of them. They come out to Gear Fest every year and mm-hmm. so I'll see some at NAM and AES and some of the shows and then um, come visit the facility in Indiana too. One of the things I notice is with both of you and all the people that we've met there is that you guys are the customers. You're experienced in audio, musicians, your music people. You, you haven't stopped being music people. When you walk through the building, music is happening. Is, is that also part of the philosophy? Definitely. I mean, Chuck Surak, who founded the company in mm-hmm. 1979, he was, he is a musician. He still plays 100 gigs a year. Mm-hmm. And he's got, he's got two bands that he's out doing it with. And the company was really founded on him being a musician, starting his own studio mm-hmm. and needing a place to buy gear himself and not finding the solutions that he wanted, places where he could go and get experience, knowledgeable people to talk to mm-hmm. and get the service that he wanted and, you know, the pricing and, and all that as well. But really that service and that, that, uh, that resource. He just wasn't able to find that. And so we wanted to provide that for his friends. And that's really where the company got started. Hmm. Mike, um, the staff is so knowledgeable. Um, when a new piece of equipment comes in, what's the process to get every 450 salesman up to speed on that? Do you just watch his videos or is there a process? <laughs> is there a process? We actually just, just Mitch does videos for everything. Yeah. Uh, do you, or do you actually, because like the comments about you are, man, he really knew this. He really knew that. But when a new piece of gear comes in, how does that integrate it into the company? We do uh, we do a lot of training, so it's so we have company wide training every Tuesday and Thursday. Describe um, that. Uh, we have meetings start at seven thirty in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll, uh, there'll be multiple vendors come in or manufacturers with their product and uh, demonstrate it. Our our, our theater and our training facility is tied into the studio, so Beautiful. if we, need, we were there, yeah, if we need them to do something in the studio, it can pipe over. You uh-huh. know, good monitoring system with uh-huh. yep. You know, like even the theater, all the all the individual seats have their own headphone jack. So if we Ooh. need to do some critical listening, we can do oh, it. Wow. Um, that is also followed with walkthroughs where, you know, like Monday through Friday, all five days of the week, um, you can find several vendors in the building mm-hmm. set up in different conference rooms, different rooms, studio. Is it mandatory or? Uh, the sales meetings we all co- we all go to, the, the walkthroughs at your own schedule, depending on, you know, when you have free time during the mm-hmm. day and you can mm-hmm. schedule that. So we'll, you know, end it. We see a lot of the mm. products and get hands on, mm-hmm. um, as well as a lot of us are, um, you know, I'm surrounded by some of the most talented people. Like, like the talent in the building is amazing to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it still blows my mind. Yeah. And, uh, so we're using the gear all the time ourselves. Mm-hmm. Like I'm in that the makes studio. makes a big difference. Cause, cause ostensibly you guys with product have, you have your own R and D. Like you're digging into it. You're figuring out what works, what doesn't work. You're communicating back to the manufacturer. Like it's, it's not just convince you to, to carry it and then you put it out. If it doesn't pass muster, am I saying that correctly? Yeah. yeah and a lot of the manufacturers we have good relationships with. Um, I've beta tested for countless, um, products as well as like, again, a lot of, a lot of the guys that are right side by side with me, they're, they beta test all the mm-hmm. time and mm-hmm. help launch products. And mm-hmm. we do product design meetings with vendors and. Let's do a couple of profiles and you advise them what to do. I'm a newbie. I'm starting out. I'm nervous. I'm calling you. What should I be prepared for? What, what makes me a better shopper? Um, just mainly just being upfront with this, with your sales engineer and letting them know what you're trying to accomplish. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, it's a long term relationship. We're not really focused on that one sale mm-hmm. or that one particular, mm-hmm. um, sale. We want you to, we want to sell you a piece of gear. Have you used that piece of gear? And then in, in, on the follow up and when, as we continue the relationship, um, keep building on your studio, not take like what you bought, throw it away and start all over again. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. um, it can, depending on what, what the goals are of the musician and, and the artist, it, it can change. If know. I don't, if I buy something and I don't understand it, can I call you back? Can we have discussion? Can you help me? Yep. I, uh, the, the sales engineer can definitely help you. We also have, um, a, a completely separate tech support department. Um, those guys is, you know, anything that's bought from us, they'll support. It's not like a, you know, a three year right. care support or anything. It's, it's for as long as you own the product and we're mm. working with you. We have a, um, so if we need to talk to a manufacturer, they can get in touch with a manufacturer. If we need to get them involved, if we're having technical issues, um, if it's like, you know, connection is- issues, um, hooking things up, integration, um, I, I, the sales engineer can usually take care of that immediately and then mm. we can help you whether it's wiring diagrams or whatever you might need, we can definitely help with all of that. Wow. One thing I like about what you guys do is um, you, you head problems off at the pass, you know, like, like I'm not sure if it's, it's 
all the way through all the product line, but like, like for example, a guitar will have a 55 point inspection before it goes out. Is that, is that true with all the, all the things that are sold? I mean, you actually check them? Um, not like interfaces and microphones yeah, and everything yeah, like course, that, but yeah. um, instruments are an interesting category because mm -hmm. there's, you know, a lot of hand built instruments are happening yeah. out there. So we want to, um, it, it's, it's really anything that's, um, that gets the 55 point guitar inspection. Um, if you're a new player, that could be your first experience holding a guitar. It's so the right. first experience with the company. We want the out of box experience. I mean, right. that all of us grew up as musicians or mm -hmm. played music that, mm -hmm. that, um, that initial reaction to your instruments really, really important. So Critical. we, we want them to have a good instrument right out of the box. So if you take that building experience where this relationship carries over time, so if you're a pro and you've been with you for a while and I, and that pro calls in, you already kind of know where they're going or, or you're able to just be an assist along the journey because you know where the goal is and whether it's new stuff that you could either recommend or problem solve that exists for the pro if, if they call in. Oh yeah, absolutely. So with a, you know, the, the biggest thing, if, if you're a pro or touring musician or yeah. touring front house engineer, monitor engineer, studio, if you're making records all day mm -hmm. and a problem comes out, you don't want to babysit that problem. So it's Absolutely. almost like a handoff. Like as long as you know, you're, because you have that one-on-one -on -one relationship, if one of my clients has a problem, I can just, whether it's a text message, email, phone, yeah. whatever communications best for the client we work with, yeah. um, I can tell them I'm on it, you know, so they don't have to think about it. They can go back to working and we'll take care of the problem. Uh, I'm sorry. I was going to say it works in the live space as well too. Yes. I'm at sound check, something jams up. I can call you and say, help. Yep. That, that happens. Oh yeah. A lot. I bet. I so amazing. it's a thousand articles, 2,500 <laughs> videos. Right. So what's your favorite song off the Kiss Alive album? <laughs> <laughs> favorite song on Kiss? Well, you know, I, I always love Black Diamond. Just the, the sound of those drums in that, uh, in that song. So, so when there, I, there you when go. When I made, when I made up that question, I was sure you would fake it. I mean, <laughs> you really do like Kiss, huh? <laughs> Man, I, but the, what really kind of got me into all this was, uh, I had pneumonia and I was actually home from, from grade school mm -hmm. dating myself. And, uh, the Kiss Alive album came out and I'd been hearing about it. My mom went and bought it for me. And, uh, that's a mom, right? To be, to be cool. serious though, your, your videos are incredible. They're, they're concise. Uh, they're precise and they're, they're an added bonus to, um, to Mike's side because, um, I go to them, even though I didn't buy some stuff from you, I go to them because they're just really good, but combined with the sale and then your video about that product, it's just, it's just incredible what, 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 what you're doing with those well, videos. Thank you. Yeah. We, we want them to be educational. We want all of our, the content that we create and it's mm -hmm. the videos that I do, but there's a lot of articles that we post and, uh, our NSYNC is kind of, I a love hub, NSYNC. Yeah. I love NSYNC. That we want that to be a resource. That's right? where I saw the guitar article about, uh, about uh, how uh, the size of a guitar, how it affects right. its sound, yeah, and, and then the price yeah. of the guitar. What, what Lynn? Uh, Lynn Houston, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lynn, Lynn wrote yeah, that. Tell him, tell him great job. Great he's, job. He's a detail-oriented guy, and he really yeah. gets into that kind of stuff and that, explains that, it so well. That, just, just so the audience knows, uh, when you buy something from Mike, before go to that, and after go to the NSYNC section, because it's got so much information that you can... Uh, uh, be, be a little more precise in how you describe things to your salesman because that, that's a big part of the process, right, Mike? If I go to my mechanic and say, I got a problem, fix it, uh, you, you might get new tires. Who knows? But if you go, you know, every time I touch the brake pedal, it squeaks. And then, then he'll say, okay, we'll take a look at the brakes. So the more information they can feed you, the better you can provide them service, oh, right? Absolutely. Yeah. From and Mitch's videos are a wealth of knowledge too. From an editorial standpoint, mm -hmm. are you, are you working sort of alone doing your own thing? Are you tying it into company goals? Are you? There's a whole team mm -hmm. and uh, certainly there's a whole team of content creators and uh, also a team of writers that work on some of our publications and things. But we all work as a team with the merchandising department, which purchases the gear and, and is on that side of it and the marketing department and sales as well. So it all, it's all factors together. in too. Yeah. Because yeah. it's a big company. Yes. And there's a lot of moving parts. I know when we went, um, I don't know that we got past the marketing building. <laughs> we were just so, you know, uh -huh. everybody was coming to meet us. It was so, such a, but the uniform thing I took away from that was a level of commitment and expertise, but all wrapped around like really nice people. Yeah. Like people, there, there's a philosophy inside Sweetwater of, that, that's sort of human and, mm. and, and kind of yes. Midwestern. 
It's, it's an atmosphere, it's right? A pervasive it's, atmosphere. That's part of Chuck's. Yeah, Chuck's it's, it's, it, that's kind of part of the, the philosophy of the company. Is if you know he wants to take care of the employees as well and, mm-hmm. and make it easy for us mm-hmm. to do our jobs. Mm-hmm. And that's that's really the, the big part of it is to give you the resources, but also give you the environment mm-hmm. and uh, whatever you need really to get your job done and to do it in a in a way that's fun yeah. that you can enjoy. Give us a twenty second bio on Chuck, the owner. On Chuck. Yeah. Chuck uh, uh, has been an entrepreneur his whole life, uh-huh. uh, got into music, played saxophone, went on the road, uh-huh. came back home and started a small studio in a VW bus, very similar, a little larger than this one, but a little similar bit. to that one, <laughs> slightly, uh, which grew into a larger studio and uh, uh, bought a piece of gear called the Kurzweil K250. Mm-hmm. And learned how to reverse I used engineer to have that. One. That was a great sound. Well, he reverse engineered it and created sound blocks for it, sounds for it, and yeah. uh, started this network of sharing sounds. And customers would buy those and trade those. And uh, then they said, "Well, why can't we buy our Kurzweils from you? Why can't we buy our upgrades from you?" So we became a Kurzweil dealer. Wow. And then they said, "Why can't we buy our recording gear from you? Why can't we buy our software? Mm-hmm. Eventually, why can't we buy our guitars? Why can't we buy our drums?" And- Bing! <laughs> Here we are today. So he's still, he still plays 100 gigs a year. You he is saying. out playing. He's in two bands. Yeah, he plays in the Sweetwater All Stars, which is a, a nine piece, ten piece. Uh, Do you arm, play guitar? In? I don't. Not, not no. in that one. No. Uh, I'll and talk then, to is a small three piece uh, uh, band. Like, yeah, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. Maybe I can get an audition. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he's out. He's out playing, um, and he's, he's still uh, cool he's working on projects and things. So. Herb and I were blown away by the scale and size of everything there. It's yeah. like going to NASA or something. Mm-hmm. Well, it, well, I think it's a combination of things. There's scale, but there's nuance. You know, there's Good point. restaurants and there's medical things for employees and there's, you know, places to play Copy. live and studios and things, like you said, to make your job easier. And it's a way to sort of make it big and personal. When we were coming over to do our, our panel, you know, we had on the radio station and they were talking about Sweetwater and mm-hmm. just, you know, like there's yeah, a, yeah. when we rented the car, the person we were, and, That's but, right. but all that. the, all the comments seemed to correlate to your, to the customer service. It wasn't like, oh, Sweetwater, this massive thing. It's like, oh, that's, that's our company. We can't wait for gear. That's hard to do when you're that big. Yeah. You yeah. know, to not <clears throat> af- essentially offend people sometimes just by scale. Um, and so, you know, it's always pleasant for us to turn people on and say, you should do it. And here's you the get experience. Right. What, what, what would you say to somebody watching why Sweetwater makes sense for them? I mean, I know we've been talking about, it. is there something specific that, you know, what is the Sweetwater difference? What, what's the philosophy? Why? I mean, for me, I, we care. I yeah. We, we really, truly like care, you know, the clients. Mm-hmm. And That's if true. one of my clients is having a problem and, you know, like, and you care about what he's going to do, like with the gear and the music. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I have, I, I listen to records they release. I have them send me stuff. Um, no, you know, good. like ultimately, you know, it's, it's, I talk to, for me on the sales side, I'm talking to these, to my clients all like every day. Mm hmm. Um, mm-hmm. The last thing you want to do is pick up the phone and have a bad interaction with them. Mm-hmm. You know, I want it to be more friendly and more friend like where we're on a great relationship. So if they have a problem, I actually, you know, want to go, whether it's if, if I got to push it all the way up to the manufacturer level, I want to, you know, swing the sledgehammer for them and take care of the problem if we need to. We've seen both sides of the, of the equation, which are the, I think you're completely correct. And, and I personally believe that there's so many musicians in the company. Like you're speaking to yourselves. Like these aren't people who are having who are number, you know, d- number crunchers saying, "Well, this is what I do for a living." These are musicians who understand the musician ethos and want to make sure that th- there's best in class. Um, I, I think that's really part of it. Mm-hmm. The other part that we get is how many people who either want to be part of the show or want to get to you guys work us, in particularly me hard to get to you guys <laughs> so i'm always def- i've got a shield up and yeah. chris lynn's behind me and i'm like it's not that simple like they t- they take it really seriously and you're going right. to be vetted and you're going to what what's the gear to software ratio is it is it balancing out i mean it's yeah, it's that's a, i don't know what the exact ratio would be but it's we, i mean we still do a lot of hardware mm-hmm. a lot of large format mm-hmm. consoles and and desks and mm. you know ssl api rupert need designs a lot, mm-hmm. of, a lot of desks and stuff still and um so we're doing a lot of outboard but as well as i mean software markets exploded over the last right. five ten years right too. right do you have to be in it right yeah. yep. this is slightly off topic but I, I get this question a lot from from a a, a, a one-person company they've got a 
beautiful piece of equipment. And they, how can I get that to Sweetwater? Is there a process, an online uh thing that they can go to if, if you're an up-and-coming manufacturer? Because you guys are pretty sensitive to that stuff. Yeah, and, and certainly we want to know about uh, new things, and we want to stay on top they, of all how, that kind of stuff. How do they start the process to get something? They would work through our merchandising department, okay. which are the people that uh, they order the products uh-huh. and decide what brands we're going to carry and what, what selection within those brands we're going to carry. And so mm-hmm. it, it would have to come in through them. Okay. Uh, but everybody at Sweetwater is, uh, sometimes I think that people think they won't be able to call up and talk to me or talk to Chuck, mm-hmm. you know, Chuck will answer his phone if you call. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, so, so you can call and ask for a particular person. Now, of course, everybody's busy and maybe, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. but, uh, but, uh, we're, we're all accessible. And so, uh, you know, start with a phone call. I, I a quick story about that. So after we went to Sweetwater and, um, I like to point out people down the chain, who do really good work, who often don't get paid attention to. And Chuck's secretary, I don't know if there's more than one, but treated us literally Mm -hmm. like gods, flights, everything. So I just hit her back and I CC'd Chuck so he knew that we thought her work was specific. It was a nanosecond. I got an email back from Chuck. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God. He's like, thank you for that. She is this. I agree. It's so nice for you to point it out, so on and so forth. And, you know, I tell people all the time at, at, at your summer event, Chuck shakes hands at the door of people coming in. He remembers people's names. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and guys, we got to tell you, when Dave and I went, (laughs) we got off the wrong exit. So we went back (laughs) around the back way and you're, you're in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And then it's like, this thing rises up out of the pl- like this. How many acres is it? Massive. I don't know thing. how many acres it is. Uh, I think we're approaching though. We we have a new wow. distribution center that's going online. Yeah, we in, saw in, that in February. That's crazy. And I think that'll take us to somewhere around. Uh, and I'll probably misquote, but somewhere around eight hundred thousand, nine hundred around nine hundred thousand square feet. I think of of facility. It's crazy. Uh, and then uh, you know the the property. I don't, I don't know how many acres it is. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Things got its own zip code. <laughs> now I, I hear candy is sent with orders. Is that correct? There's candy yes. included with every order. Is that right? And where did that come from? You know, I think that that uh, that started back from day one too. Chuck just wanted to have a little extra, just something to mm-hmm. to throw a thing in. on it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, uh, you wouldn't believe the amount of candy we go through in a year. I, given the size, <laughs> we make of the some company, candy manufacturers be... very happy. I'm sure. Where do you store the candy in the in the warehouse? Yeah, it's all part of the warehouse. It's all part of the section there. Yeah. It's like where the bags of the bitter honey at. <laughs> That's the section. That's, right. what, That's the section I would look for. What's the future hold? More growth. Mm-hmm. Continue to grow. I mean, we we uh, uh, Chuck is fond of saying that if you're if you, there is no standing still, you're either moving forward or you're moving backward. Mm-hmm. So Sweetwater is always trying to move forward, and that could mean everything from expanding a building so that we can. Uh, take care of our customers, service our customers even better, even faster. Mm-hmm. It could be finding a way internally to change something that will make things happen faster. Maybe it's bringing in something new. Maybe it's changing the way we're doing something. So everything is always open for scrutiny mm-hmm. and for improvement. And so, uh, you know, we feel that as we improve, uh, the company continues to grow. And part of that is we have to improve to, to be better and better and better as the company grows. Do, do the, the company employees are there ideas heard? Do you have access up as well? Or, you know, <clears throat> it's yeah. open door policy. So, mm. you know, since I've been there, um, you know, like the it, Jeff in charge of sales and Chuck and the company, but both of them have been very involved and mm-hmm. managers. You can walk in the door. I mean, you can walk into Chuck's door if you want to. Mm. Like now you can just walk down and go talk to him, you know, mm-hmm. and he's, um, Amazing. and he's very much in, like when I talked about those training meetings, when you walk in, he's in those meetings mm. and he's in those training right. seminars mm-hmm. too. So he's not, it's not just we're doing this stuff and he's not mm-hmm. like not in the in the know. What's his he's, favorite kind of music? Chuck's. Mm-hmm. His rock. favorite band is Tower, Tower of Power. Power. Oh wow! Oh my man, so, Chuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Squid Cakes. Yeah, so that, that's the kind of stuff that is man. The, the Sweet Order All Stars. Chuck. Too, so that kind of stuff. So. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I love Tower wow. Power. I, One of the I nice things is that it's a very flat company. There's not layers and layers and layers of management mm-hmm. to go through and it's certainly not micromanagement of any kind at all. You know, everybody's yeah. kind of empowered to do their job. And so there's enough, just enough management to kind of make that happen. Yeah. And so you don't have to go through layers of things to submit an idea mm-hmm. or if you, if you have a suggestion or whatever, you just tell somebody. There's only you know, one place where I noticed a bit of a hierarchy, which is Chuck's car was always the coolest car in the parking lot. Well, <laughs> <laughs> there are reasons for that. Yeah. We pulled in. We were like, 
Oh, but that's Chuck. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's earned, he's earned a dealership. So in your background, mixing, mastering, engineering, engineering, yeah, for years. Yes. Still doing it. Yes. Still actively doing it. Yeah. Um, and act fairly, really busy with it too. But, um, and, uh, a gearhead too, just on top like, of it. Yeah. Oh, vintage outboard to the more modern boutique stuff and mm. microphones outboard. But I mean, too much gear. You know, it's, and it's a problem with, with you between videos and editorials and articles and books and guitar playing and instrumentation and so on and so forth. This is a lifelong commitment. Lifelong continuing commitment. On. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it truly is amazing. Um, it's just so much fun, right? So, I mean, it would be awful if I had to work for a living. Is, yeah. Is the way, the way that I, I describe it. I mean, it's just, I, I enjoy everything that I do. So, Never seems like work. Well, see, here's the fun part. Now that we have these extensive backgrounds, we have this thing called batter's box. And so you get to bring those backgrounds to the fore in a sports way. Now, you're a little bit of a sports guy. I can oh, tell yeah. in our pre-conversation. <laughs> uh, Dave is the pitcher. You're the batter. There is no correct answer. And the job is to knock his block off. So uh -huh. he's pitching. In a Sweetwater way. <laughs> With the Sweetwater difference. <laughs> Chuck a poop. Okay. Yeah. You, can, you can both answer one at a time. I, I, I tailored some for both of you. Strat or Telly? I'm a Telly guy lately. Compressor. API 2500. Nice. 500 series. Uh, tons of modules. Uh, currently, right now, Rupert Neve 542s. Uh, Electrodyne 511 EQs. Huge fan. I'm going to answer for Chuck and say Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Favorite guitar pedal? J Rocket Dude. Ooh. Reverb. 2016. Oh, good. I would have said sometimes. Uh, uh, Brocasti M7. I, throw, I love the Brocasti too. Synthesizers. Moog. Hmm. Interesting. Um, you know, I. I <laughs> yeah, sorry. There's, there's just so many. So many cool ones. Yeah. Uh, Vancouver 2 Bus Plus from Dangerous. Bass. Bass? Bass. Man. Because uh, Neil Peart just passed away from Rush, got to say the Rickenbacker 4001. Gotcha. <laughs> Monitors. ATC. 45s? 45s is what I'm using. Okay. Both of you guys I know have made records. Both of you guys are really talented engineers. What's the cheapest piece of gear you used on an important recording session? First not, counting, not counting cables? <laughs> no. Come on, smart Or picks. Uh, what? <laughs> or picks. <laughs> Mitch, I, I used to like you. That's you were my hero. You were my SM57. Okay. I was going to go with a 57. I'll go with a, I'll, you know, like a, um, a DBX 160 rack mount. XT. Yep, XT. XT. <laughs> How did they do? They did great. I thought they, uh. Except they, for the synthesizer question. I'm still, it's going to bug me all night now that I can't like, but, name that. Okay, but see, the problem I'll is you have again. so much information in your head. We've <laughs> yeah. had some who have no information in their head. That's right, a whole right, different. Right. He's trying to recall this video on, on it. Yeah, right. <laughs> do you ever watch your own videos? Uh, I have to proof them all. And so I, I watch Ooh. them before they, they go live. So I do see them all. Uh -huh. And um, then do you ever watch them again? Uh, no. not unless there's something I need to, yeah. somebody says, somebody says, what did you use for this? And I have to go back and yeah. figure it out. Or I'm the same way. No. Like, once I've done it. I've both of you it. guys, I'm telling you guys are an asset to the audio community at large, much less Sweetwater, you know? Oh, thank Not you, Dave. You guys are amazing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, I think, um, uh, the reason the show was a good idea is that I don't know that people have a guide for how to buy, you know, and everybody needs point. to buy, you know, people spend time finding crack stuff and finding other kinds of stuff, but not realizing that they could spend the same time, spend better money, have a much better experience and create a relationship that I've recently brought a customer to Sweetwater and they hadn't probably bought in 10 or 11 years, brought up their information, got to the sales engineer they had before, boom, right back in the groove, doing their thing. Um, we love the relationship. It's a great partnership. Absolutely. It's great people. Yeah. Holler at Chris Flynn, my boy. Yeah. Uh, and all the other Jen and all the other folks that, that we will do. We'll do. Uh, hopefully it's good on you guys end as well. Yes. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Oh, no, Pleasure. Appreciate it. And you know, anytime you want, you're here. Um, and as we're fond of saying around here for audio, you trust, you got to go to the bus. Mm -hmm.